What is going on, miners, and welcome back to the channel. Well, I am joined by a special guest, Mr. Brandon Coyne. What's going on, man? Good. How are you? How are you doing? Thanks for having me on. Absolutely. So I think the last time I saw you was actually, I saw this man last time at Mining Disrupt on the top floor of the Bitcoin yacht uh for the tournament the poker tournament having drinks i think it's the last time i saw you yeah yeah that was um i don't know how i weaseled my way in there but uh it was a good time <laughs> and uh i was actually reminiscing back to the first time that i met you and talked to you mm -hmm. was uh before you did your face reveal if you remember that yeah yeah Oh yeah, Early it was days. a while ago. I mean, that's like when that's when I did like the Meet the Miner series, and it was just like me and a guest, and I didn't show my face. It was the most awkward thing for like interview style ever is to like not see the interview uh, individual themselves. But yeah, so uh, this should be fun. Um, you know, today we're definitely going to talk about GPU mining, something that uh, has definitely come an unfortunate way over the last few years here. Um, so let's jump back. You know, when I first got into crypto mining and into even content creation, like you were a diehard GPU miner, like that was your world, like going back a few years ago. So tell me about just what your setup looked like right before I'm talking like a month before the Ethereum merge kind of what did that look like for you from a, from a mining perspective? So I, like a lot of people, thought that the merge was going to get pushed like it had been pushed back multiple times. So um, I was living in a different house before I bought this one. I had me and my wife had a house built um, about an hour from where I was, but I had built a detached garage. I had another electric service put in. Um, I had uh, a small general electric rate. So it was a little bit better than residential. I had just set myself up to expand more and more and more. Um, at that time, I was near uh, 90 to 100 graphics cards. Um, I was doing a lot of flipping hardware. I was trying to rotate older stuff out, bring newer stuff in. Trying to find 30 series was, you know, the ultimate goal because they were our bread and butter back then. But um, I, I had no intentions of really slowing down uh, until the merge like hit me and everybody else like a ton of bricks. Uh, and there, everybody said like, there's, there's not going to be anything to pick up the pieces. Like you guys better be ready. And where everybody was just like, oh, it'll be, they ain't going to pass it. It's going to get pushed out. Um, so yeah, I, I was floating about a, a 15 to $1,700 electric bill on my separate service, not including my house. Um, so I, and out of that, I only had a couple box miners for ASICs. Um, and then like two S nines that I ran in the winter time. Everything else was all GPUs. Um, and then, you know, there for a while I had like a little CPU run, I, you know, made that, that discovery. And uh, it, it, it didn't do me good back then, but it did me good later on because I just had the hardware ready. So it was fun uh, while it lasted. And I've just been waiting for it to fire back up ever since. Yeah, it's crazy to think that like, you know, your electric bill is that high for GPU mining because I mean, I think I, maybe it's just a shocker now versus then, but then it was like Ethereum, you know, majority of cards were on Ethereum. Um, you know, I, I even know for myself, you know, I had, you know, not, I didn't have a lot of 30 series cards then. I maybe had a handful of 3060s, but a lot of my stuff, you know, I was really just getting there 580s, 1660 TIs, you know, that was really what I was running at that point in time. I still had my 470s running, my 570s running. They weren't necessarily on Ethereum, but you know, I still had a variety then, and I I had nowhere near that many uh, that that you did at that time. I think my 580s were like the eight gigabytes were like my bread and butter leading up to that point, uh, and I thought 3060s were like the coolest thing in town uh, at that point in time. So let's pivot directly after the merge and and, and kind of what that looked like and from what memory serves. I think we really latched on to Flux and Ergo at that time um, is where we saw things. Where did you end up going with GPU mining then? Today's video is sponsored by the team over at ASICmarketplace.com. With crypto mining hardware prices dropping, it's critical to find an online store you can trust with your ASIC purchases. The team at ASICmarketplace.com has you covered with some of the most competitive pricing on the market. No matter what brand you're looking for, ASIC Marketplace has it. To name just a few, Bitmain, Goldshell, What's Miner, IB Link, iPolo, Jazz Miner, and many more. 
There are no surprises with ASIC Marketplace. The price listed on their website includes shipping. Imagine that. Finally, ASIC Marketplace takes the buying experience to the next level by accepting cryptocurrency as payment directly on their store. Go check out ASIC Marketplace today via the link in this video's description down below, as well as save $110 at checkout with discount code the hobbyist miner. Um, so I was I was a big flux proponent. I still am. Um, I've just you know it's it's kind of let me down uh, in the short term. I actually just uh, was working on a Ubuntu install uh, to do like a flux AI rig, but that's a whole nother topic. Uh, in the meantime, we were mining old fashioned flux, just the uh, the blockchain. Um, and I, I tried my hand in Ergo. Um, it, it, nothing made the money that Ethereum did, but it was almost like everybody was just mining something to be ready for whenever something popped off. Um, and I, I gave it about, a, I don't know, about six months. And then that's when me and my wife, we, you know, we had our first kid. We were talking about having a second kid. Um, and then we got the opportunity uh, to move uh, and buy land. So um, it didn't make sense for me to set up a whole nother mining operation at this new place. So I was, I was like in between, there was a period of time where I moved about 25% of my setup over to my dad's shop. Uh, I don't know if that's right. I remember, remember that, that up top, right? He had like yeah. that set or you had that set up and everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So he had a big garage and I, you know, I ran some extra like 30 amp plugs down there to, so I could, you know, I, I was running maybe like 20 or 30 cards um i had more in there but a lot of it was just kind of sitting idle or turned off uh because i just i didn't want to invest and keep burning the electricity um not knowing what was going to turn into what um i i missed i did miss the gpu caspa train because i did not think it was gonna yeah i didn't think i was not a believer and um yeah that was unfortunate that happened a little bit later after you know flux and ergo but um, yeah, I kind of, me and my wife made that, that decision to, we sold off all, all the crypto. Um, we sold a majority of my hardware and then we moved and we rolled all that into, you know, building our, where we're at now and buying the land and, and not having any debt. So it's, it's done good for me, like long-term, but short-term I was kicking myself cause I'm like, oh my God, flux is going to be huge like flux is gonna you know make me a, a bajillionaire um so i was not happy uh but hindsight's 2020 you know i'm i'm glad i ended up where i'm at now um there's there's always something you wish you'd change in the in the past but i can't complain yeah, I know for me uh, at that time, I was very much split between Ergo and Flux. And I remember when Ergo got upwards of that like $5 mark and I sold all of my Ergo at that point. I mean, I think I was just looking for profitability, sold it, which I'm really glad I did uh, at that point in time, held on to all my Flux, rolled a lot of that into nodes and just continued to allow the nodes to run to accumulate Flux. But yeah, so I mean, jumping ahead then, I think Caspa, you know, Caspa was introduced to me as for dual mining. It was Ergo and Caspa was really what how it was introduced. I actually went back and looked at some of my previous videos. Now, I in no way got in as early as some of these other early adopters like Greater Good Mining or Son of a Tech that really got into that and talked about it on their channels. But I at least got into dual mining it then. So I did have a bag. But I think the thing is, is like we look at Caspa like, man, look what happened. But we didn't know then, like you, you don't know that it's going to turn into it. And I think that's something that GPU miners, like if we look over the last, you know, uh, it's crazy to think well over a year now with the Ethereum merge, like we're well past it. What are we at two years now? That's yeah, been a while. Um, yeah, that we've jumped to project to project to project as GPU miners and community members just chasing our tails on profitability. What are your thoughts on that? And like, when does it just get exhausting? That that is a good topic to bring up because you know I I I don't know if I started before you or or quite a bit before you or not but you started it, before it, me absolutely did yeah yeah and see I came from a group that started before me so you become desensitized to projects like very quickly because you know you've been a part of or mined or tried or you know done interviews with with developers for 
countless, countless projects and being in the industry and being in the know and, and all the current stuff, you see so many of them fail. So it, it's hard to, you know, it's like oh, people are like, oh, man, why didn't you mind more Caspa? Nobody knew Caspa was going to do what it did. You know, mm-hmm. why didn't you mind more of this or mind more of that? No, nobody knew. I mean, there was there's been uh, quite a few projects that I thought were going to do really good that just literally are worth nothing now. They're not worth, you know, the the bandwidth on that they even still hold on the Internet. Um, so it, the whole desensitization, desensitization, uh, like, you know, back in the day we used to go and, and everybody was just on, you know, Bitcoin talk, just waiting for the next stuff to fire up. So that way we could be early on it and mine it. And it's like, how many times do you have to be early before it's just like, I don't even want to mess with it no more. Uh, but I mean, early, early bird gets the worm and, um, you can't have them all. So, uh, it's, yeah, yeah, that's, that's kind of, I guess the, the good and the bad with it. I, I twisted from being, a, I used to spec mine a lot. And, um, I think a lot of the older generation used to do a lot of spec mining. Um, but it kind of turned into, uh, I just want to take my guaranteed money take my profit and go on about my business because it, it, it mining transitions from that hobby to the job. And, and that happens quickly. It, it creeps up on you. Uh, I know you've already well past the hobby point. You're not the hobby. I don't know anymore. what you're talking about. Uh, I know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I yeah, think I, it's, I, I think it's... In your shed. I don't know what you're talking about. There's just sheds. There's garden sheds. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah, so I th- I think you're right though. You mess it, you mentioned a few things there, and it's like going from project to project to project. And I think, you know, those that were involved with Ethereum and, and even had the opportunity to mine Ethereum, man, we were so spoiled. Like you could plug in anything, and it was profitable. And I mean anything. And you and it, and that and that granted that was during the time period where GPUs were very hard to come by, and it was like a hunt. I mean, I remember my passion of like playing with the new egg shuffle and like trying to win that every single day or waiting for these Zotac drops and things like that. And um, I remember talking to Red Fox Crypto. He had a bot running, like a bot running to buy GPUs and everything. And he'd he'd wake up and be like, oh, I just bought 10 GPUs last night. I need to offload these. Like, <laughs> But things have come like, I think the hard part is, is GPU miners, we continue to believe that that next ethereum exists and 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 i don't want to be a debbie downer but i also want to be realistic to say what if it doesn't like what if that doesn't occur like what when and that's really the hard one for me is like i almost got exhausted from like every other week it was like oh new project need to get on it and then just like you had mentioned when do you continue to spec mine every one of these every week and a half? And when do you try to turn to profit? And I, you know, it, I have one GPU mining rig on right now, but I've had most of mine off for six months now or more. And I've just continued to, you know, turn it right to USDT and liquidate it because I'm like, I, I have no faith in these projects. They come and go so quickly. Yeah. Yeah. Be like, uh, like you said, trying to be early and hold bags of every single project. Um, years ago, there was lots of project launching, you know, it was, it was super open and it's become even more open and accessible. Now everybody and their brother can make a coin, create a coin, make a blockchain, you know, spin up an AI generated website with AI generated content. See back in the day, some of the early stuff we would go is like, Oh, run all these pictures and run all these images through, you know, uh, uh, um, the web web filter search or whatever to see if these images match anything else on the U S or like on the web. Uh, so oh, it's like, really? you know, okay. these- that was before my time. Yeah. 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 So That's like, cool. it'd be like, you know, the about us page on a, on a, web, on a, a coin and it'd have, you know, the developers pictures. It's like run all those pictures, search, see if they come up anywhere. Like if they're fake, you know, could just to try to get some like early signs to see if this coin's legit or not, or they're trying to pass something off. Cause if they're, you know, not genuine on the front end, they're definitely not going to be genuine on the back end. Uh, but nowadays with AI generation, everything can be unique. Everything can look good. Um, it definitely doesn't take as much work as it did previously. So there's just so many projects that unfortunately are just never going to make it. Uh, so you could spend a lot of money chasing the golden goose and never get the egg. Yeah. 
So jumping ahead then to kind of more modern day, let's say in the last six months for you, you know, you talked about having all those GPUs, you liquidated most of them. Where are you at now from a GPU mining perspective? Um, so the only actual G like physical GPUs that I have mining are actually in my office because I have a fixed rate electric. So I have a, a standardized amount of electric that I'm allowed to burn a month. Uh, so I have a 2080 Ti that's in my office PC. That's just, I think it's actually on flux right now. Uh, funny enough, um, not profitable. It, uh, like it doesn't make money. Um, more or less, I just turned it on to do something. Uh, but then all my other GPUs that I have running are on AI compute platforms. So they're not mining. I have on some of these platforms, you know, hosts or customers can mine on your hardware. Um, but I'm not getting paid out in crypto on some of them. Some of the, the platforms do pay out in crypto. So, uh, you know, I can see where some people are like, oh, it's still mining because technically they could be mining. And I'm like, oh, you're not wrong, you know, because like the GPU could be mining, but you're you're not mining. Yeah. So that that's where I'm at right now. I have um, 530 90s running on AI, um, 33060 60s, a 4060 Ti, 16 gig. Um, and then, yeah, in my office computer, the 2080 Ti mining. So I'm, you know, sub 10 cards or right at nine or 10, 10 cards running. Um, and it's, it, it feels like nothing because like, I just got my power bill in the other day. My power is like 300 bucks. I'm like, this, this doesn't even make a dent. <laughs> you know, I remember the, the, the bad days. I haven't had a bad electric rate or electric bill in a long time. So I, uh, you want to swap? It, you want to swap? Yeah. Yeah, we can swap. Yeah, no. no, not right now. Um, I, I have been rolling a lot of my money back into my shop. So I still have a ton of cards um, and I, I get a lot of cards. Um, now, sales has slowed down tremendously on graphics cards. I don't know if that plays a part in, you know, people are losing the sentiment of like GPU mining is going to come back. Let me keep buying hardware. Uh, but I'd say about. 75% of my GPU sales are to flippers. They're building computers. They're not mining. Um, so just a little, you know, piece of nugget of information there. Cause back in the day I used to flip hardware and it's like, everybody wanted this card to mine on. Nobody was buying a card to go gaming. That was just a side <laughs> thing, you know? Um, yeah, but definitely. now they're, they're buying them to game on. So do yeah. You are think, you still, uh, do you think that, so uh what was your question then we'll jump to mine oh yeah yeah my bad i didn't mean to cut you off this is your 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 talk but um oh no uh, no you're good you said you had one rig running what is that rig yep. that's still running and what's it on i have uh 12 30 70s right now uh in my octo miner um and uh yeah i just every i was pulling everything out of my shed to clean it and the gpu rate the the cases have been sitting in there so i put my 11 year old to work blowing them out cleaning them out you know as i was taking them out of there you know that's it's that child labor you got to put them to work and uh oh yeah and i decided i decided i wanted to get that 3070 back on um and so uh after actually having dinner with um yeti from the dynex team down in miami at mining disrupt just talking about some of the things that Dynex is doing and some of the things they have come along. I was like, man, I'm just feeling a little nostalgic, like to get, you know, get that up and running. So it's on Dynex right now. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I was hitting them up at dinner after drinks, like, Hey, how do we get more profits back to the miners? Like, how do we get that going? Because eventually, as I told him, you know, you're eventually going to eat up all your GPUs within your pool. So you're going to need more GPUs back on Dynex. So how do you incentivize? Like, how do you increase those profits? So it was a really good conversation I had with him. But yeah, so that's what I have up and running. It's, it's a variety of 3070s, uh, but those are the... And I actually did not get these 3070s till after the Ethereum merge. Like, I didn't have these beforehand. As I was talking about before, I had 3060s because I really couldn't afford them back then. I mean, 3070s were pricey, especially 12. Not a chance. Not a chance I could afford those. So, uh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, so my question know, for yeah. you was more... Yeah, my question for you was more along the lines of where you went with your GPUs, where you decide to go to some of these AI platforms. Do you think like that is the future for for current GPU miners that are because there's a lot of GPU miners that are very they're locked into that religion of my eight card GPU mining rigs, mining these coins. And, and do you think that they're going to be pushed in that direction? 
Well, it's a tough sell because like a traditional mining rig it can't just be plug and play into a, you know, AI rental application. There's been some people that have tried to, you know, throw a mining rig on with a dual core on vast and they don't get rented or they get rented at ridiculously low rates. They have to keep, you know, fighting their price down because you're limiting the compute plot, the compute availability on the card so heavily through the, the PCIe, you know, one X risers. Um, I think a lot of people have transitioned over to AI. Um, do I think it's going to be the savior or the next big thing? I, it's too hard to tell right now. There's so many platforms that have so many promises. Um, a lot of people are, are hung up and unhappy with salad right now. You know, they, they want salad to be like the, the next, uh, Ethereum or nice hash or something. They just you know, set it and let and forget it. But, um, they just couldn't handle the influx. Uh, so I have I have tried the the flux flux core or flux edge flux core is the the client or client side, but um, it's still not fleshed out. But I mean, it just got launched what just a couple months ago. So they they still have a lot of growing to do. I like it. I like the interface. Gives you lots of information. Um, the next one that I've I've made a how to video on literally a month ago but they closed off entry to new uh, new workers. So you, I only have one rig on it and I can't add another one there. They have closed off everything until they basically can get some, some demand because there's no demand. Um, so uh, crossing the line of supply and demand, um, there's way too many GPU miners and former GPU miners that have GPU sitting to even, you know, like shake a stick at so it, AI and compute platforms um, aren't there yet. Uh, a lot of people don't. I've heard from customer side a lot of people don't trust the cloud computing um, like platforms yet. There, there's yeah because you're you know you're running something remotely and you don't know where you're running it, what you're running it. Um, so if it's privileged information, you know it could get out. It's just so many variables. Whereas you know, mining, it was, it was just straightforward. So, um, I, I am very careful to tell people whenever they want to expand and buy more like AI and compute stuff, uh, just be careful because it might Ethereum. you. You know what I mean? It might just be uh, a couple months from now, salad might be gone. I don't think vast is going anywhere. Um, uh, it, it's kind of like a self-sustaining ecosystem, uh, if there's not a lot of supply, everybody just drives the price down on all their machines because they can control pricing. Um, but nobody wants to, you know, run their 4090s for pennies. So um, it, it's it's a weird time. It is a it's been a weird two years for uh, like GPU dedicated guys. So I think that's why a lot of people are are transitioning. You know, um, ASICs and ASICs are becoming a lot more uh, palatable in these like small form factors. Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I think question curiosity with you. So if folks on my channel who aren't familiar, Brandon does have a actual PC shop, a hardware shop that you can buy from. Uh, and there's actually a full website. I'll put that in a link to in the video description for that. So go over there and check that out. But for you, Brandon, are you finding a lot of your customers are building these AI based rigs? Like, are they looking for some of those high end like X99 and these other types of high end hardware? Or is that not where most of your customer base is? So there was like an influx there for a short period of time um, because I ordered in a bunch of like the Chinese X99 boards. And then I found a, a U.S. supplier that decommissioned servers. So I got tons of CPUs uh, and then tons of RAM uh, stateside. But uh, no, majority of my my customers are not doing AI and compute. It's that's kind of like that, you know, the spike in sales. And then whenever profitability on the platform dropped off, yeah, profitability on selling that stuff kind of went out the window, too. Um, there's also been other people that have followed suit on the scene, a couple of resellers that all of a sudden they're now selling the Chinese X99 motherboards stateside, which previously nobody touched those, you know, or like messed with them uh, in the U.S. But as you know, it gets out, it's free market. So um, the only thing I have run into big time is people that are, you know, building themselves an AI compatible computer for themselves personally. So they want to make sure it can nail all those points, you know, 12, 14, 16, 
uh, lots of cores, lots of threads, can hold a bunch of RAM, um, but then they might be using that computer personally. Um, so they're they're trying to like tick all those boxes and get the most use they can out of it. So that's I get a lot of questions like, "Hey, what do I need to like spec something out to the max?" But I don't want to go buy a ninety nine hundred X. You know what I mean? Um, they they don't want to go spend brand new AMD money, but they still want. Right now on X ninety nine, it you can get up to twenty two cores, but the the like diminishing or line of diminishing returns is right around like eighteen cores. So you can still get an 18 core chip for like 20 bucks. Wow. So then looking to the future, uh, we'll kind of end off on, on our thoughts here. Um, yeah. <clears throat> I would say, you know, for GPU miners right now, the, the avenue that I think that uh, the perfect utopian world is we need some type of hybrid. We need something where we can use all this GPU mining hardware, but that can be used in a high demand situation. Because I'll be honest, I don't know that any, you know, I've, I've talked to a lot of people about this, you know, with crypto, you know, Ethereum did so well because of all the projects that were on Ethereum. So there was high transactions that occurred, high demand for Ethereum. And so we as GPU miners, there was a high demand for us GPU miners on that network. We don't really have that right now. Like there's no project that's really pushing in that direction. And I think a lot of people are hopeful that like Caspa will eventually turn into that as time goes on and that GPU mining will return for Caspa. But the downside is you and I both see all these ASICs coming online, which is insane and it's just growing more and more. So for me, I think it's really gonna come down to some type of project out there that is that middleman that is allows you to take your GPU mining hardware and utilize it in some weird compute perspective that pays you in the option of crypto. I don't know that the GPU mining community is really looking for fiat. I think we're traditionally drawn towards crypto. Uh, what are your thoughts on that and just, you know, the future of GPU mining as of, uh, you know, today, mid-August? So I think right now we're encountering something um, in the market and the ecosystem that didn't happen years ago, um, especially when Ethereum was thriving. Um, and that's that there's so many manufacturers that are aggressively building hardware um, and it's not this super high barrier of entry. So I think realistically, if any kind of project gets its feet off the ground and it's making profit, um, you're going to see your ice rivers, your gold shells. I mean, Apollo even reached out to me just the other day. They, I, I'm sure you got the email too. Um, they have new stuff coming. We'll see how that goes. But I, I think ASICs are going to swoop in. And just like with you know, everything that says, oh, it's ASIC proof or ASIC resistant, nothing is ASIC resistant. Um, I mean, heck, they'll, they'll go and they'll stick, you know, GPU cores in there if they have to. Um, and then now with uh, even Alphapex building these, you know, reasonably priced miners, uh, it's not just one big dog on the block. So I, I think any kind of project uh, that gets its feet off the ground is going to basically be ousted um, I feel like, I feel like that's kind of happened, you know, Caspa was good there for a while. And then all of a sudden the, the ASIC started rolling out and then it's, it's not going to stop. That is a snowball that is rolling down a huge mountain. Uh, and then now a is going to get hit. And I only wonder, you know, what are these guys going to set their sights on next? Um, you know, is, is, is I, I think it could happen to basically any project, um, so if I had to advise or, you know, give a, a, a long-term sentiment on GPU mining, I don't think 30 series or 40 series is going to be profitable anytime soon. Uh, realistically, I don't think we're going to, you know, revisit the GPU mining cycle for maybe another few years. Um, whenever people, when all this hardware that people are hoarding uh, kind of ages out, um, so then you got 50, 90s or 60, 90s that are wiping the floor. So, uh, you know, a kid that's got 330, 70s on his floor can't come in there and, uh, who's, uh, the, you know. who's that guy? I don't know who that guy <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah. Every, everybody knows the, the 30, 70 King, right? So, um, yeah, I, there's just way too much GPU hardware lying in wait. Yeah. If anything becomes profitable, they can hammer it. Um, and then it, yeah. if, if the big dogs, the ASIC guys see anything profitable for too long, I feel like the hardware is just going to get developed for it, especially since um, it's just crazy how they uh, all these small units are coming out uh, because that, that wasn't a thing yeah. years ago. 
Um, Small home box it, miners. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. The only thing we got years ago were really expensive gold gels or really expensive iPolos. And a lot of them had a mm-hmm. lot of problems. Um, so yeah. I think we're, we're very lucky nowadays to have all these different options. But if you're going to do GPU mining, uh, just be, be very careful. Um, and a lot of people are like, oh, you got to be ready. You got to be ready. I think a huge thing is, is back ready. in the day. Yeah. No, back in the day, if it was good, <laughs> it was good. It, it wasn't like, oh, you got to be on the network and you got to be ready to turn it on for, you know, this week or this day. No, Ethereum mining, you just turned it on and you let it run for weeks and months. And, oh, mm-hmm. oh, there's a, you know, there's another coin that's doing good. Let me go mine that for a month, you know, or put some mm-hmm. cards on it. Um, it wasn't like you had to snipe the the hash rate or back mm-hmm. and forth. There was always people trying to like micromanage it, but if it was good, it was good. Um, so if it if it spikes back up again and profitability goes back up, um, if I don't have enough time to spin up and and jump on it, then it didn't last long enough for it to be worthwhile anyway. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think know, um, la- last thoughts, last thoughts I give to people yeah. on GPU mining is I would recommend people not expand their GPU mining farm as we've talked about. I actually would recommend people downsize to like one GPU mining rig and then spec mine with that. And here's why I say that spec mine. Yeah. So it's within reason, kind of like what you alluded to, where it was just like, OK, your power bill isn't very big, but we're not looking for like. You're not going to mine Caspa. You're not going to mine a lithium. But what's the next Caspa? What's the next lithium? So in order to be that guy, you need to be spec mining these coins as to where Caspa was when it was GPU mineable, you know, or a lithium so that you were you literally just build some of these different bags. And so if one out of 100 hits and I'll be honest, that's probably what it's going to be. You know, then you're at least sitting very, very comfortably. You haven't overspent too much. So that's something that I may move more in the direction of is like. I literally have a closet of probably 80 graphics cards sitting in GPU cases. And it's like, I may consider just liquidating all of them and getting a variety of GPUs on one eight card rig. And then just being like, all right, this month, I'm going to put it on coin, you know, Rockstar, you know, and then the next month, I'm going to put it on this one. So then my, you know, I I might spend, you know, a few bucks on electric, but guess what? I'm, I'm getting all these little bags. It kind of brings you back to the roots almost. And now you're just waiting for one of these to pop and you're not like going nuts. I just, I, I, I feel like that's um, a direction I'd love to recommend people at this point in time about GPU mining. What are your thoughts on that to wrap things up? Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Don't spend money uh, that you can't afford to lose. Obviously everybody always talks about the hardware is always going to be have an intrinsic value, but it's not the same as the Ethereum days. I mean, uh, these gpus they 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 lose their value quick and fast especially with the next generation always around the corner so yeah if i was going to tell anybody anything um a single card rig is like perfect especially now that you can scoop up like old octo miners or you know like server style cases cheap so you could like slap it in there put it somewhere out of the way let it run remote into it change the software and like you said i think uh i think one out of a hundred is being genuine or being genuine generous um it may be more than that uh but only time will tell um i did want to ask you one more thing before we get off here though is um i was going to ask so out of out of the whole time that you have been mining what was your your like favorite like your easiest algorithm that you liked setting up it's like oh this coin's on that algorithm you know easy that's no problem and then what was your like one that you dreaded um turning on it's like oh my god that coin's on that algorithm like i don't even want to fool with that um because everybody seems to have a different answer yeah yeah um i mean i definitely would agree that uh alethium or um uh uh, Ethereum spoiled me getting into that originally because of the fact of like that was when because when I first started mining, I didn't actually get to Ethereum based cards for about a year and a half into mining. Like it was I just couldn't afford it. Then I was really running a lot of four gig cards, five seventies. I had a lot of four seventies, you know, the Sapphire Nitro ones and such like that. So when I got to a, a Ethereum, it was very simple and very easy just to like get them up and running, which was really, really good. I think then following that, um, you know, then looking at it of like, okay, what ended up becoming a challenge was, so the dog, my dog's trying to come in the basement here, um, was, 
uh, Ravencoin because I was still mining like in my basement then. So like anything that was Ravencoin based, you know, or anything that was Kapow based, I think that was my biggest challenge of just managing electric and managing heat at that point in time. I think then though, jumping on as time progressed to make them a little bit more relevant, um, uh, I want to say probably, uh, I'm trying to think what else was really tricky. I'd probably say Dynex, maybe, maybe Flux was a little tricky getting into that at first, kind of like jumping right from Ethereum. And then it was like, wait, I actually have to like spend time on these overclock settings now with Flux. Like when, yeah. <laughs> you know, because we were so spoiled on Ethereum, like people had already gotten every overclock available tweak out there. So it was like, it was so simple. But what about you? How, how did that look for you? Um, yeah, not to keep you here captive forever, but uh, just to keep it short and sweet, um, the my worst uh, and the one that I dreaded the most was original Ravencoin before Kapow when it was X16R, like uh, version one, and then they went version two and then Kapow. Um, it was just like, imagine Kapow, but worse, trying to get overclocks dialed in. Heck, you could run a card at stock clocks and it would rotate out those six, 16 different algorithms and you'd end up crashing in the middle of the night. And then it's like, OK, well, let me let me pull it back. And our goal back then, um, especially in like 27, uh, 2018 time frame, 2017, it was just like I need my system to stay running. Like that was the goal. We weren't like min max. <laughs> ability was key. Hash rate. Yeah. It was just like yeah. I need it to run. And that was back in like the you know, I was still pushing Windows. Um, you know, before I even I tried ethos for a little while, but uh, and then simple minor. But um, my easiest one and my favorite, obviously, you know, just straight up OG dagger, um, Ethereum dagger, Hashimoto, because uh, it worked and a lot of other coins, you know, jumped on it. So it's like, you know, just crank the memory, pull the, you know, pull the core back or even just see what everybody else has done, which um, what is it? The mining chamber. He was always a wealth of knowledge. Um so it, I almost always did really good with his overclocks. I just kind of copied those and gave him gave him a little bit of credit where credit was due. But um, yeah, that that uh, that's kind of um, that's kind of almost antiquated now. It's like everything is is so fine tuned that you can just look and click and it'll give you automated stuff. So I don't know if anybody's going to be worried about dealing with algorithms before we know it. It'll just be just turn it on and let it run. Yep. 100%. 100%. Well, awesome. Well, before we go, tell people a little bit more about your PC shop, um, you know, kind of where they can find it and what type of hardware you have for sale there. Uh, yeah, so I do have a brick and mortar location. We are located in North Carolina, but a majority of our sales is online. Um, we do service internationally. So if you go to our website, www.bc, as in Brandon Coin, dash PC, as in personal computer, dot com. So BC dash pc.com you can see what a majority of stuff that we have in inventory it rotates pretty quickly um so i tell people a lot of times if they want to stay up to date you go over to the discord and i have a section where i just post new items um but that's that's been really fun uh because i try to price all my stuff at ebay buy it now lowest available or lowest price so that way you know you guys get a good price i get a lot of return business that way um and then I'm not looking to make a ton of money. I'm just looking to, you know, make a living. And that's that's what I've done. So I've I've switched over and I'm about 90 percent or almost full time at the computer shop now, um, which is, has been really nice. So if you need anything, I have a personal cell phone dedicated. I, I made a dedicated line so you can go to the website, shoot me a text message and uh, just try to provide a level of customer service that I always wanted from other stores that was you know, not feasible. And as I grow, I've already learned that um, it's hard to keep up. So uh, I'm just trying to take take baby steps and get there one, uh, one one day and one step at a time. Awesome. Well, that's so cool. Make sure you guys go check out. I'll put a link directly down below. Brandon, thank you very much for joining us today. Guys, I'll put links to everything as I mentioned down below. And for myself and Brandon, we'll see you guys next time. Take care. Today's video is sponsored by the team over at Quantum Expeditions. Bitcoin mining can be incredibly profitable, but as most of you know, doing it yourself can be complicated and risky. Unpredictable costs, equipment failures, and high energy costs make it very difficult for regular people to achieve consistent gains, let alone scaling up. Quantum Expeditions makes it easy for retail investors like yourself 
to participate in the vast opportunities of large-scale Bitcoin mining without ever leaving your house. Join a community where you can contribute your knowledge and feedback or learn from the experience of others. Now, for a limited time, you can invest directly in the company through an exclusive Regulation CF crowdfund and earn from the future growth in the industry. Quantum Expeditions just completed their first deployment of Bitcoin miners, three weeks ahead of schedule. So now is an excellent time to get involved. Come check out the Quantum Expeditions link in the description below.